Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined by my good friend, Stephen McLean, one of the greatest former Olympic medalists in the history of the United States in gymnastics and also a very good friend of mine. What's up, bro? How are you, man? Hey, I'm great, Jay. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, that was a, a really cool intro. <laughs> <laughs> of course, man. Yeah. I mean, it's all true. I don't BS. So guys, let me give you guys his bio. So yes, he is a two-time Olympic gymnast, world silver medalist, and has a passion for human optimization and performance. And of course, helping others achieve their goals with health and fitness. And True story, Natalie Min introduced us, I think, what, dude, like six years ago, five or six years ago. And then we kind of, you know, we're high and by guys in between. And then we reconnected about two years ago. And then we actually uh, just spent time together a couple times, but most recently in uh, uh, A4M in December. Yeah. And then we were also yeah. together in August uh, at the whatever that was. <laughs> Yeah, 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 exactly. Whatever that was, but, but I mean, but but look, you you've uh, you, you know ever since I saw you, I think on Ben Greenfield's podcast, I was like, I like this guy. I like his energy. He's he's saying a lot of the things that like a lot of guys aren't really going into, like the peptide world, the hormones, like to put a needle in you. Like a lot of people just yeah. you know, but um, you know, and then when Natalie introduced us, you were kind enough to just jump on a call and just say, Hey, dude, you know what's going on? I'd like to meet you, and then in West Palm beach, I came yeah. up to you and you were like, Oh yeah. And you just literally said, come follow me. Let's go sit down. Go. And so, you know, yeah. it's, it's a testament to, you know, I, I think, you know, for anyone that I'm sure you're following knows you well, but in person, you know, Jake Campbell is a, a very open person that I don't feel like you meet a stranger. I feel like that's it. As soon as you, you, you start talking to someone there, you know, like you talk to them as openly as anyone that you, you know, so I appreciate that about you. I appreciate you too, brother. Thank you. And I received that and reflect it right back to you. But uh, so, yeah, so guys, uh, Steven is an expert in a lot of things. I mean, he has an absolutely amazing physique, world-class physique. I mean, his body is unreal. I mean, again, you know, to be a two-time, you know, uh, Olympic medal champion in, in, you know, especially when he was in gymnastics, that's 20 plus years of just grind it. You know, like you said, six days out, six days every week of just crushing it, you know, eating correctly, living, uh, steadfastly and extremely diligently and tracking your intake of food and tracking your intake of exercise and all the different things you do. So, I mean, I know you're obviously incredibly disciplined human being. Uh, you have an amazing backstory also, uh, where you basically were, you know, close to killing yourself after you got done becoming a competitive, uh, you know, Olympic, uh, athlete, yeah. um, due to alcoholism, you know, and if you want to share that story, you can on this podcast. I mean, we don't have to go there. I mean, I think we're mostly going to be talking about peptides and stuff, but that's, you know, one of the reasons you guys that he's on here today too. He is a real live expert on using peptides. He's been using them on himself for a long time. And of course with his clients, a lot of uh, high level athletes and also successful, uh, professional people, so I think him and I are going to really, truly geek out here today as we talk about peptides. But again, you could share your backstory with, uh, with the audience if you want. But, you know, as I do now yeah. on these podcasts, before we get there, I just want to kind of get your take because I know you just left LA and you, you have a very yeah. similar opinion and attitude about, you know, the world and where everything is going that I do. But, you know, maybe just kind of your take, <clears throat> personal opinion. And again, it's an opinion on where we're going, you know, as a society, like, and I know it's again, a, an opinion and everybody's got one, but like, wh wh what do we do? Are we heading towards what I like to think of, you know, a golden age building a new earth or do we have, um, you know, some real topsy turvy days and moments and times ahead of us? <laughs> well, I think we all, all know that we are clearly in some sort of topsy turvy of 
reality right now. I mean, yeah. it's, yeah. I, I remember I went to school at UCLA back in the nineties and, you know, there was a, a zing in the air, you know, it was, it had, it was just California was, was had something special and it kind of all started around 2015. I just saw the, you know, the, it just started landsliding and it got to a point where, I mean, the anxiety that is in that, these cities now, yeah. The, the, I mean, like my head was on a swivel everywhere I yeah. went, you yeah. know, and I'm like, my quality of life is just diminished. You go anywhere, you go out to eat. No one gives a, sh a crap about like totally getting true. every single time I order got wrong every single time, you know, I'm like, people are gone. Like, yeah. what yeah. the yeah. hell is going on with society? Like it was, I, I you know, especially in these big cities and yeah. You know, when I, I just recently moved to Vegas and it all started when I went to West Palm Beach when, when I met, yeah. you know, you in person. And I was like, oh, my God, people are normal here. Yeah. I was like, wow, I'm having real. This feels like I went back in time, you know, like I was like, yeah. oh, my God. And that started yeah. the genesis for me to separate myself from like saying, I need to get the hell out of here, out of L.A. This is this is really bad. And look, it, there can be people that live there and love it and more power to you, you know, I, you know. This is just my my voyage and in, into all this, but you know, it got me to start paying attention to things like. Uh, have you ever heard of the, the book, The Fourth Turning? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that we're in the fourth turning right now, hundred percent. Yeah, so it, you know, I started looking for all these reasonings why this was happening, and I, you know, I kind of settled in like, look, this is the seasonality of generations, and it's there's season. Like, you can't get mad at winter for being winter. You can't get mad at summer for being summer, right? It's just that's right. the season. So I kind of just said. You know, and it helped me sort of like check out of being like feeling like I was being accosted. I just said, okay, this is what's going on with society. Um, and, you know, but when you look at the news and you look at the misinformation, you look at the way the pandemic was treated, you know, look, if you, you say, I just, ha this is all I say about it. The news is designed to wrong foot you. Like, like I am also a crypto investor. I studied finance in college. It's one of my big passions. I almost went to work on Wall Street. I'm glad I didn't because I, I just can't sit at a desk. You know, <laughs> I can't. I I literally was had a a meeting with a friend at an investment bank who said, "Okay, I'll bring you in." And I said, "I have two questions for you." I said, "A or first question: Do you eat breakfast at your desk?" He's like, "Yeah, a lot of times." I said, "Okay, question number two: Do you eat lunch at your desk?" Yeah, a lot of times I was like, I can't do this job. I, I can't sit still. I got to move. I got to do stuff. But anyways, being in like I was able to sell Ethereum and, and Bitcoin at the top of the last cycle. Amazing. And and I did that. And and when when they were get, Bitcoin was getting around sixty eight thousand. What was the news? It's going to a hundred k. It's going to a hundred k. Right, right, like, right. Oh, it's it's going to this big fat round number. It's how convenient is that? Like. Because all the news outlets are bought and paid for, and they're all basically pushing everyone, the retail, to essentially get dumped on why the institutions just got out. And so, I, you know, you look at it and you're like, not everyone living believes the news is designed to uh, trick them. And so they're believing. So we have half of the society just going around going like buying into all of this woke nonsense and all of this like craziness that doesn't make no sense <laughs> you know i can't believe you got me talking about all this but it, it, <laughs> i mean look at, look at look at my, my gestures gift, <laughs> but i'm happy <laughs> it was a good warm-up no, i guess true. hold on I, i'm gonna you said a lot i want to unpack some and, and we'll stay there because we'll get to peptides we can go as long as we need to i mean you and i'll probably talk for 90 minutes which is awesome yeah, awesome. People love great that. uh the truth is, is that we've created a bifurcation in society. You and I talk about this all the time. You've got the people who are, what, let's just call them hyper awake and aware. You know, they, they take personal accountability of everything, their health, their financial situation, their relationships. And then you have the woke, which are the people yeah. that have no accountability and have externalized everything to their government, to the cops, to their priest, to somebody, not them. Right. And those people yeah. all come from a place of victimhood and the victimhood, you know, is always uh, disor you know, the classification of victimhood is disorganization, you know, not showing up, 
you know, saying one thing and meaning another. I mean, it's, it's always the same. Yeah, exactly. It's always the same. And so it's like, there's no, we don't have to like get into like, you know, duality of like, oh, well, th- you know, those people are like this and that those people are like that. It's just, you're either empowered, sovereign and free and you take ownership or you're not. And I don't care how you classify those two people, but those are the groups on society of today. And, and the people who are, again, we'll call them disempowered, bro, they want the matrix to fully envelop them. They want Peter Kurzweil or, or Ray Kurzweil and Peter Diamandis and those people to put chips in them and hook them into this, you know, amorphous metaverse that will then now drain them of everything, including their spirituality and their life force, you know, and, 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 they're, and they're okay with it, bro, because again, they don't have to work hard now, right? Like, yeah. why would I have to actually exercise and eat clean and take peptides and do all the things that you and I talk about when I can just hook up to the metaverse and I can imagine it as so and create that reality. And then there's like people like us and we're like, Oh fuck. No. Like I enjoy going to the gym. I enjoy injecting myself with BPC 157 and healing myself when I get hurt because I'm training hard or intensely. You know, I like eating well. I like fasting for 20 to 24 hours. I feel good. I get BDNF. I'm more connected spiritually. So, I mean, we don't have to get into like what side is better than the other. People have already made their choices. It's, you know, when guys like you and I, because we're obviously on the sovereign empowered free side, when we, when we get together, it's kind of about more talking about, okay, well, what's next? You know, because yeah. it's like, well, where do we go from here? If, you know, say 75, and I'm probably being kind, but it's 75 to 80% of people are hook me into the metaverse. And then the rest are like us. I mean, we're clearly a much smaller percentage. Well, then where does it go when the metaverse is, like you said, running all of the major cities? I mean, yeah. people like this, bro, are going to be living in like enclaves or, you know, uh, what would you call it? Like communes, islands, mountain communities. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you and I have talked about this before, but bro, it's definitely coming. There's no yeah. doubt. I, I, I don't think those people will last, to be honest. I, I think, look, you know, the survival of the fittest. I just right. really think right. that nature is going to find a way to to, you know, wean some of these, you know, people out. And look, I don't w- wish ill upon anybody, but there's so many slices of this. We could talk about so many aspects of this. Look, I coached uh, athletes, kids, and I got them scholarships to universities and I got them to be national champions. And, uh, you know, I couldn't even coach anymore because the entitlement now and, <laughs> Like if you take, if you take a, a group of kids and you say, okay, I want you, I want you girls to do this drill over here. And I want you to go do this thing over here. And then a parent comes to you and says, why did you single out my daughter? You made her feel isolated and, 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 and like she's not part of the group. And I'm like, well, that's the drill she needs to work on. Right? Like the, the nonsense that is like, look, you can't performance coach anymore. I can't when, when we. When you say you want to be a competitive athlete and you want to be the best, that means that you and I have a contract that means that when you don't want to do it, I'm going to stand for your goals when you're too weak to. And that means that sometimes I might have to have difficult conversations with you. People aren't comfortable having difficult conversations anymore because their feelings are are so weak now that they, it's just like, you're like, I don't know what, there's no point in me being here anymore. I still don't like, Oh, I guess you don't need an Olympian coaching you because uh, you know, you're impotent at this point, you know, you can't yeah. do anything about it. You know, and another, another interesting flavor, and this will probably kind of get us into the health stuff was that, um, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine, really smart guy. And when he was talking about all this stuff that's happening with gender and kids and, and I said, listen, I said, I said, imagine, I said, I said, I think it's all, I think part of the problem is all of these toxins in the environment. And I had just read Estro Generation, you know. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I was said, look, I, I just, I said, imagine going through puberty and never having an urge. I said, so you, the, the, the urge is what makes you feel like I'm this sex and I'm attracted to this other sex. What if you, your endocrine system was so hampered that, you just didn't have these urges. What are you going to choose as your sex? You're going to choose whatever you feel is more socially acceptable, right? Yeah. yeah. And he was like, it's an absolute nonsense. This is an evolution of society and we're all learning to like, you know, see this stuff differently. I said, look, let me ask you a question. 
when your wife is that time of the month for her, does she act different? He goes, yeah. yeah I go, exactly. that's hormones. They drive behavior. Hormones drive behavior. And if you're not getting a hormone signaling, you know, you're, you're not going to have, you're not going to, it's not going to allow you to understand, you know, what side of the fence you're on, you know? And so there's just so many, you know, ways and examples that, that the world is really divided and, and, and nobody wants to take accountability. Nobody wants to say, oh yeah, maybe, maybe it is all these plastics, it, you know, maybe it is all this EMF. Maybe it is this stuff that's, that's causing our endocrine systems to short circuit. I mean, look at people, look at how overweight people are. Do you think yeah. that's totally 100% just food? I know that sugars and everything and everyone's addicted to sugar, but the endocrine system looks like it's blown up. It's just shot. You know what I mean? Bro, this is why I Anyways. love you. I can literally <laughs> let you just talk and I can literally like work in the background. And by the way, for the whole audience, I am working for him because I'm talking to our CTO that handles Limitless. And, and by the way, just so you guys know, Steven is a affiliate for Limitless and we're about to get into that and blow that all that up. But uh, I got to ask you because he just asked me and I forgot. Is it Steven? 15 or is it McC McCain? Uh, McCain, 15? McCain. Yeah, McCain. Okay, he's asking me right now. So anyway, only on the Jay Campbell podcast, am I <laughs> throwing out affiliate codes and I'm going to put that banner up in one second and I'm going to tell all of you guys right now. So here's the deal. This guy is an affiliate and his affiliate for Limitless and he gets 15% off is McCain, M-C-C-A-I-N, 15 so go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com forward slash, no, actually just go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and put in McCain15 and take 15% off. We're going to get into uh, peptides in a second, but yeah, dude, um, I mean, all of that. I mean, I mean, it's just, we're, we're in a very strange time right now. And as you know, we are the master, crea master reality creators. We create our reality through our words, thoughts, and actions. So even with all the dissonance and the craziness and the zaniness going on around us and the balloons and the UFOs and you know everything that's just insane, <laughs> if you don't pay attention to it and you just wake up in the morning and you get into your meditative or contemplative or introspective practice, and then you start focusing on what you're going to create that day, hopefully in the service to everybody else and not focused on attachment to money or income or ways things, you know, show up or end up, your life is insane. I mean, I mean, when I say insane, like it's amazing. Like, dude, every day I was telling you before the show, we started, like, I, 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 I'm just creating nonstop. I obviously I left, you know, I agree with you. You know, you left LA to go to Vegas. I left San Diego, you know, Marietta low, low Cal to go to Mexico. And I moved here officially on December 13th. We actually started renting our place here on November 1st. We sold, as you know, sold everything, all my biohacking gadgets, both of my houses, both of my wow. cars, all my toys. And since I moved here, bro, I've never been more creative in my life. I mean, I'm literally going to publish three books this year. You know, I've already published one. Uh, I have two more. They're already in process. I've got them completely laid out. There's nothing blocking it. I got the team. I got the staff. I've got the people to affiliate you, you included all of it. So it's like, sometimes you really do have to leave that energy of the States or the major city. Let's call it the major city. Cause there's still really good places to live in the States, but the major yeah. cities are demonic. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. They're absolutely demonic. There's, like you said, the woke uh, nonsense that is so pervasive in the schools, in the government. I mean, it is insanity what's going on in California, bro. There's nobody oh, that has half a brain can support living in California anymore. You just can't. I don't care whether you're Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, you know, yeah. uh, you, there, you, you just can't support the governmental practices and procedures. It's literally insane. The other day, you know, somebody sent me and you know, and you've heard this, but somebody sent me a link on a deep article published out of one of the rags out of Sacramento about what Newsom wants to do to give, to give all the money to the black people because they were former slaves yeah. and then make the taxpayers 
in, in the state of California pay for it. Now, again, I'm not against any of that stuff. I understand that what happened to black people in, in the 1840s or in, and before all the way up to the Civil War was horrifying. And, and they also suffered you know, racism and segregation and all this other shit up until the 60s, and whatever. But this is insanity. I mean, the people in the state of California who are alive now have nothing to do with any of that. And now you're going to tax them. And, and now look, now you know this and I know this, but like a lot of people don't know this. They think I'm making this shit up. They don't understand that living in California, you are going to pay for this. They are going to take this out of your yeah. tax, your income that you make, whatever it is that you do to pay these people, you know, who are supposedly owed this. Now, obviously, you know, um, what would you call it? Victimhood people are like, yes, their hands are held out. Give me more money. I want to hook into yeah. the metaverse. But it's like, you can't support that living in California, bro. So it's like you left, you're in Vegas now, you're freer to, you have more clarity. You know, obviously I'm way more clear. I mean, the reality is, is like, and we can end it, you can have the final say on it, but like if you're living in a major city, the energy is not creation energy. It is yeah. victimhood energy. It is low vibration. It is, you know, dissonant, you know, cacophony sounds. There's massive levels of unemployment. There's massive levels of homelessness. It is just not the place to be. And if, again, if shit goes south at some point, which it seems like it could, you don't want to be there. Like that's the last place you want to be, Stephen. The last place. Oh, I, 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 I realize that. I mean, it's, have you heard about this, um, this lady they had in California to, to, they, they contracted to teach nutrition. Her name is Savage X Fatty. That's her Instagram handle. She's a 300 no, see, plus that's all I need to hear. black person that was basically saying if somebody, <laughs> this is not a joke. This is, I, I mean, literally, it's, it, you, you, if you saw a movie about what is happening in society right now, you'd be like, I don't believe that movie. That's too far fetched. But this person is teaching. Nutrition basically saying if someone tells you you can't eat a donut, you basically they're telling you they're shaming you. And you, you just look at it and you're like, like, you cannot make a case for me as to why you, it's, it's good to live in California. I, unless you are so wealthy and you live in a Bel Air and, a, and you, have, you never have to leave your home and you have so much money that you can literally just throw it away – I don't, I just don't see it. It's, I don't, I, don't no, I agree. It. But see, that's the thing is like, even those people who are insulated, cause that's what you just described, bro, it's still dangerous for them because if they do have to leave their house, there's no cops to protect them. I yeah. mean, Hollywood, you know, West LA, North Hollywood, WeHo, NoHo, all those places are not protected anymore. The cops don't even show up. I've, you no, know, I've read stories it, it, of people that got robbed at gunpoint that were multimillionaires that worked in the entertainment industry and nobody even came to help them. They were late. Somebody found their body, like their, their doorman or their, uh, what do you call it? Their, 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 uh, their custodian folks or something. They'll find their body laying there three days later. And then they're like, we don't know how they died. And they're like, oh, they were a victim of a robbery. But yeah, again, I mean, that's, that's what it is now, dude. That, that's what yeah. it is. That's why you left. That's why I left. I told you my story. You know, Monica's brother is a robbery homicide detective in Rampart and he lives all the way out in Upland. And he told us in 2020, before we moved down there, he's like, look, man, you know, when all the riots were going on, he was like, nobody's coming. Yeah. We're like, Nobody. okay, well, that's all I needed to know. And I got, but you know, dude, some people, they just can't take action. But my family, bro, my job, bro, everybody that I know lives here, bro. I can't just uproot. Really? Yeah. Your life's not that important to you. Anyway, let's switch. Yeah, topics. no, you're yeah, you're right. You're, you're right. I mean, I we could, you know, you're you're just pinging me on so many ways that I, stuff I could I could talk about, but I think that, you know, we, we've beaten that horse into the ground. Yeah, and, dude, and, it's good. I, I'm dude. I'm just gonna hit you with peptides right now. We're just gonna go all right, for let's, that. Let's okay, talk about so peptides. obviously yeah, you read it. the book. Uh, you're very versed in using peptides. You're like me. You're way. So I will just tell you guys an audience standpoint, like Steven is a legitimate peptide expert. He's not a, he read a couple of books on it guy. He's been using peptides for more than a decade of his life. He's very familiar with them. Him and I have had very deep esoteric conversations on peptides. So like, he's a guy that I can really, and we both of us can really geek out on. Um, why don't we, we'll just start with like the newest, you know, stuff. Like, I mean, what are your thoughts on these fat loss drugs? I sent you the article that Mike Cernovich posted today. 
as I was telling you, we are literally, you know, the mainstream is so far behind us, bro. You know, it's like when I tell people I was using uh, Ipamorellin in 2004 from Southern Research Company in Texas, they look at you like, huh, what? I mean, the average doctor didn't even know what a peptide was until 2016 or 2017. So it's like you and I have been using peptides a long time, but like, what are your thoughts on these, you know, GLP-1 agonist peptides? These, you know, again, call them appetite suppressing uh, resting energy increasing or rest, resting energy expenditure increasing peptides. Like, you know, do you have, are, are you, first off, are you using them yourself? Or, and if you're not, like, you know, what are your thoughts on these? Are these now truly, as people are calling them, the greatest fat loss drugs ever created? Well, I look, I mean, it's, I have, I try to get familiar with, with as many peptides as possible. Obviously, I'm always chasing whatever I feel like I need. And then I'm also yeah. trying to broaden my knowledge. And I think the you know, the best way to do that is to research and to try, you know, like I yeah. almost, I don't think I've ever recommended anything that I haven't tried from all myself because I feel sure. like, look, y- you know, if you dive into peptides, what does all the literature look like? It's cellular pathways. This is cellular yeah. medicine. So it can, yeah. you know, for the, for someone who's not comes from a scientific background or a biology background, you know, it can be like, Jesus, but look at the same time, it's like, do you really even know what a piece of food is doing all the things that it's doing? Do you know what, right. you know, like a certain supplement right. is doing that, you know, that works for you? Do you know all the pathways that it's hitting at the end of the day, you got to stand on the shoulders of the people that have, you know, recommend these things that have some authority that have you know been there and tried them and researched them. For me, I think the fat loss stuff, I mean, there's so many ways you can hit it. I mean, I recently just started doing, you know, five amino one MQ again, you know, and I'm always, every time I take that one, I'm like, this is a great, it is a great peptide. It, you definitely notice like, I'm like, cause I, I went, you know, when I, at the very end of my LA, you know, I, I felt like I was losing a little bit of my, like, I was getting a little soft in my midsection, which never yep. really happens. And so I, I kind of perked up into some of these things. I love the growth hormone peptides. I think those are just a, a fantastic, you know, multiple purpose uh, peptide, you know, uh, but I've tried the Tessa Finson. I've tried the, you know, I, like I said, I'm doing the five amino one MQ right now. I like the, the uh, CJC 1295 no DAC with the Um, I've tried all the different flavors of the growth hormone peptides. I think that one is, is the most gentle and uh, you know, that one works really well. It's not a miracle. You can dose it four times a day. If you want to try to get into like, you know, uh, human growth hormone, hormone type, you know, uh, levels, yep. but all the GLP one stuff, like the semaglutide and the terzepatide, like that is for me because I'd never have struggled with fat loss. Um, cause I, I'm pretty dialed in. Um, I purely have been looking at them for, helping other people um you know a lot of people will say well steve you're just it's just your genetics your you know you you have these genetics so that's always been a hurdle for me when i recommend stuff to people and it's like well my sister is and is overweight you know you know pretty overweight and so like all my research kind of is going to like kind of understand and help her so i mean i, I you know in terms of which ones do i think works best and how should you start with these? And, uh, you know, I think what you do is, I mean, look, you make a great list. You, you have your, your, your lists of ones, right? I think you start in my opinion, potentially with something like the CJC and Ipamorelin, because I think that one has a lot of good benefits besides fat loss, right? It, 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 you know, growth hormone is for anyone that's ever taken exogenous growth hormone. Uh, it is, in my opinion, the gold standard. I mean, your sense of what, you know, subjective well-being, hair, skin, your sleep, your healing capacity, your energy levels. So why not try to get a, some semblance of that, you know, for your fat loss and have that as the base, right? Yep. And then layering on top of that, if you are a kind of person that eats a lot and like, you, you don't have a lot of metabolic flexibility, then you might want to dive into something that potentially will make you feel satiated that like, you yeah. know, tesafensin, which kind of ramps up all your neurotransmitters or, you know, three of them, you know, it's, it's going to give you, it has a nootropic effect. It gives you energy and you can get really good work done and you're not going to feel like you need to eat. Right. 
Um, I personally have not done any of the GLP one stuff. I haven't you said I got the terzepatide. I have it sitting in there uh, in my my freezer, but I just I, honestly I haven't needed those things because I, I have found that um, you know I, I'm I'm already at, at a level where I just don't need them. I've researched them. I've been to pep, I've been to Doctor Seed's peptide conferences. I remember like everyone was talking about it. Uh, I think if you are if you are really overweight and you need to do something now, and you, like you you the best thing you can do is is do something that's going to work, right? Because a lot of times when people are overweight, they only will try one or two things before they give up again. Yeah. Right. So you you have to give them what's the biggest the best tool out of the toolbox so that they go, oh, this is working. So you might not want to, you know, taking, you know, something like a growth hormone peptide isn't probably going to be a big enough game changer for you. So I, I think it all depends on your degree of, 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 of fat that you need to, to go about, you know, getting rid of. What, what are your thoughts on this? No, dude, 100%. I mean, you know, obviously I use growth hormone, right? I'm very open about using genotropin. I take one IU. Sometimes I take one and a half IUs, Monday through Friday. I've been using it since June of 2021. I get it. Obviously, it's Pfizer quality. Uh, I don't use any bro growth hormones or Chinese or genotropin yeah. or blue tops or yellow tops or green tops or any of that bullshit. That's all fucking to me <laughs> fake. I mean, I know guys do use it and they get results, but I, I'm, I don't play that game, right? Like I'm at a level in my life now where it's like, if I'm going to use a drug, I want to understand the process, the sterility control and the process that is manufacturing about it. Obviously, my business partner is like one of the world's leading formulators and biochemists and all that kind of stuff. So it's like I don't play that game. Um, I love the growth hormone, uh, you know, secretors, the GNH, the GR8, GHRH and GRN peptides. And, you know, we can go down that path, but nobody will understand what we're fucking talking about. So, yeah. you know, we just kind of mentioned the names, Tessamorel and Ipamorel, and you already said CGC. Um, you know, there's uh, AOD, you know, there's a bunch yeah, of them, but yeah, that, yeah, that one too. Yeah. If I, if I'm going to use, and again, remember we're all different and you know, we, we should state this for people and this is not talked about enough. So this is a perfect place to talk about it. As we age, we produce less and less IGF one, right? Other growth factors, you know, the pituitary isn't as primed. So it's like, I see, I don't see doctors talking about this enough and they should be, but how effective are growth hormone releasing or increasing or producing peptides if one is at an age where they don't have any natural, you know, IGF-1 production left? So it's like you kind of have to do the math and you also have to do your own work slash research and understand what you're working with, right? So a guy like me who's nearly 52, tomorrow, motherfuckers, I turn 52. Nice. And I'm nice. going to be in the best shape of my life. My pictures are coming. I've been doing amazing, which we can talk about later towards the show. Fantastic. I got a new book coming that's going to be called 30 Days to Shreds. That's literally using every possible adjuvant on the planet, you know, <laughs> both uh, natural and uh, and obviously synthetic to get into the best shape of my life. And and again, to measure health markers, uh, markers, it's not just about looking good, right? It's also about feeling good. And of course, showing the showing the biological age and values. But anyway, that's coming. But um, I, I don't think enough people, again, and I'll just call them people, let's just call them people like me, over 50, men and women, are really understanding like how much natural IGF-1 production do they have? Because if they didn't have any, then, you know, using TESA or IPA or CJC, it's not going to be as effective as using a microdose of growth hormone. Now, again, I'm not judging. I'm not condemning. I mean, obviously, we have to be in a place where we can afford, uh, you know, growth hormone, pharmaceutical grade growth hormone legally, and hopefully with wherever your country is, you know, where somewhere you can procure it, hopefully with a script. I mean, most people don't have scripts with growth hormone anymore. And, you know, we should disclose it's not, you know, and obviously, um, Rick Collins is a very good friend of mine. He just had an amazing post on Facebook about growth hormone. I, I'll send it to you. You should read it. It's okay. not a controlled substance. It's not a class four or class five like testosterone is. Now, there are states, because again, as you know, the USA is fucked up. There are states that literally will prosecute you if they find that you have uh, you know, pharmaceutical growth hormone that you're using without a script, which is insane. Because it's not yeah. a controlled drug. It's not a controlled substance. And you know, and I know, growth hormone is not going to do anything to you. I mean, you could take 
massive dosages of growth hormone, which is what they give kids who have dwarfism and pituitary disorders yeah. to increase, you know, the size of their growth plates to, to push through the ephesies that, you know, cl close prematurely. And do, bro, I've read all the research on it before I wrote my article, wrote my article in 2021, which is again, when I started taking growth hormone, I did all the research, I did all the math. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to go down this path because like you and most people who are smart, we were told early that using human growth hormone will shut down your not natural bodies, your body's natural production. That's a fucking lie. Now you can definitely shut down your body's production. If you're Dorian Yates or Dave Palumbo or one of those guys, and you're taking 30 fucking IUs a day split up into three, yeah. 10 IU dosages. Right? So <laughs> it, bro, it's like everything. The difference between a pill and a poison is always the dosage. And Absolutely. if you're, if you're using a fine, precise dosage of, therapeutic testosterone or estrogen or, or progesterone or, you know, even SH, I mean, DHE3, anything combined with a precise dosage of a growth hormone releasing or an agonist like, you know, human growth hormone, like IPA, like TESA, these things are life enhancing. Yeah. Nobody is going to come back to you and I and say, Jay, there's research that shows that growth hormone causes tumors or enhances the rate of speed of uh, metastatic tumor formation, right? So, I mean, like, look, yes, all of that stuff is shown true, but when you go through the research like I have and you've looked at it, bro, and I know you know this and I'm preaching to the choir, but for the audience, all the research, almost in everything in the world that shows negative results or negative occurrences is in uh, pro, uh, comorbid population groups. So sick, fat, diseased people most of them who have type two diabetes, uh, Alzheimer's, you know, again, which is type three diabetes. So again, people who have, as you know, Stephen, have treated their bodies like dumpster fires their entire fucking life. And now they're in the fucking third or fourth stage, the fourth turning of their life. They're in their seventies <laughs> and they're fat. Right. And they're in highly inflamed. And now they're giving them all these medications. I mean, how does that ever extrapolate to people like us? It doesn't. So it's like, I always tell people like, I don't give a shit about your research. I don't care about your study. I write about this in my books. Every single study that's ever been done in the history of the world cannot be replicated. You can't replicate studies. So you and me and Dupree are N of one. We're all biochemically unique. So it doesn't yeah. really matter. What matters is your lifestyle, right? Like, you know, for a fact that if you live clean, uh, you, you know, you have a much better chance of using a surgically precise dose of anything and getting results from it. And then the other thing is, bro, is like we can go into the metaphysical aspect of this. And I tell people this all the time, like people will write to me and, I'll, and I'm going to let you go long winded here in a second. But people yeah, write to me and right. say, you know, bro, I started I started taking Tessa or IPA or GH. Yeah, doesn't matter. And in the first week I had heart rate elevations, you know. My sleep was disturbed. And like, I read all your stuff and I love your work, but I think you're wrong. So then, you know, I write back to them. I go, no, I'm not wrong. Here's the thing. And this is what you don't understand. You are not a physical body. Okay. You are a waveform, holographic, spiritual energy being of plasmatic discharge. And so if you have any of that shit happening to you, which I don't deny or doubt that it's not happening to you, it's because you're in fear of it. And yeah, now you're right. going to bed thinking, oh shit, I took an IU of growth hormone, bro. I'm probably going to get cancer or I'm probably going to get heart disease or yeah. it's going to speed up my heart rate or blah, 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 right? It's certainly whatever. Yeah. And then your mind manifests that reality and you create that biological perturbation in your system and yeah. now you've created it. And now you're going to tell me or Steven or any people like us that, you know, get, get feedback from people like this, that it was the drug that did it. So it's like, you yeah. know, I'm constantly telling these people like, no, dude, you're the reality creator. Your thoughts create your reality. You are nothing more than your thoughts. So it's like, if you're creating that, then change your thought patterns. And then I'll just finish and you can go off on this is like, this is what I tell people. I said, affirm this. I'm healthy, whole, and complete, and I'm using human growth hormone, ipamorel, and tesamorel, and whatever, tesofensi, terzapatide, to live longer and stronger. Affirm that. Say that every day. Look in the mirror when you wake up in the morning and say, I believe, not believe, that's a weak word, I know that by using this substance, this drug, whatever, 
that I'm going to extend my life and I'm live longer, stronger. Again, you can create whatever positive Absolutely. affirmation you want, but dude, that changes the game. But most yeah. of these people, as you know, they're in fear of whatever it is they're taking. Somebody is in the back of their mind saying, oh, dude, you're taking testosterone. That's illegal. That's unethical. That's, that causes side yeah. effects. Lyle Alzado, his balls blew up. His brain exploded. I mean, dude, you've heard it all, dude. You know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, look, I will say this. If you have something, if you, if you have some unresolved issues in you, or you have really bad negative talk, or you have really self-limiting beliefs, you can do everything. Exactly. And yeah, you'll get some physiological benefits, but you can do everything, but you will not feel great. You, you like, yeah, look, I have, I'm in my 50th year now of, of being on this planet and- Congratulations, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank you. I feel great. And, uh, and, but I, but, and by the way, you know, bro, look at both of us. Hold on, I wanna stop you. I'm 52 tomorrow, you're 50. We look better and I'm not bragging. And by the way, you guys, I'll send you pictures of Steve and we'll put pictures up when this thing runs. Both of us look better than 95% of men that are half our age. That's not a lie right now. So we are proof that age is literally a psychological construct. Is it not? Look how young Steven is. I mean, you look a lot <laughs> younger than me because you're not in the sun as much as I am, right? Because I'm down yeah. in fucking... I'm in paradise now and every single morning yeah. I'm in the sun for 30 minutes, but like both of us do not look our age, bro. Yeah. But here's the and thing. That's when I met you, you. Yeah, when I met you, all right, before the moment before I met you in West Palm beach, I woke up in the morning and I went to the gym. Guess who was there? Jake. Both of us. That's right. And of everyone in that entire conference. And by the way, bro, you and me were 6 15 in the morning and you and I right. were at, it was three <laughs> 15 for us. Yeah, exactly. So the, you know, look, there was a lot that you said, but you know, look, you've got to start believing in what you're doing, period. I mean, there's a lot of times where I'm like, I do a lot of stuff for my health and longevity and anti-aging. I'm really into this stuff. And a lot of times I'm like, you know, I know this stuff is working because I have a relationship with it. I can do it and I can feel it and I know it, yeah. but there's also something with the placebo effect. Oh, it's, absolutely. I believe it's working. And so I'm dude. affirming this, you know, every time that I do anything, you know, and I'm going to correct I you mean, by the way, cause you're not believing anything. You're knowing it's working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. You know, um, but I mean, to finish this, this conversation on growth hormone, I mean, look, here's the thing. If you're going to do growth hormone, I always recommend you need to be going to a, a proper integrative or functional physician. You need no to be doubt. doing blood testing. Like no doubt. that is on the level of like, don't mess with it. Like, like do it right. But hundred percent. if you, but bro, yeah. nobody does all the guys that are using growth hormone. And again, I don't want to label or slander, but it's mostly bros and they're not using pharmaceutical grade growth hormone like you and I would be using. So, I mean, yes, you are a hundred percent right. And you yeah. should be getting your labs. And I mean, I don't, I'm going to let you get go. I don't want to steal your thunder because you make a great point. That's the problem is that majority of these guys that are doing it are not doing it right. They're not. Yeah. So you have to look at somebody and you got to go, okay, where, what is your age? What degree of an emergency are you in? And to what level are you going to do sophistication? And then yeah. from there you go, that's why a lot of times I'm like, okay, try this, or well, let's get you on this, or let's get you on that, you know? And, and I, I look at like medication and more natural substances and they all kind of go down and the, the degree that you sometimes need stuff, I'll give you this kind of a shitty example, but I was working on a commercial 12 hour days. I was like the helping this guy do all the stunts for the commercial. And I had to do all of them and do all the prevision for it. And I bent my toenail back like in half. Oh man, that sucks. Oh my God. I I so bad. You probably I literally were seeing stars for 10 minutes. I realized why they did that for, to torture prisoners. I couldn't yeah, exactly. sleep. I would fall asleep for five minutes. I woke up and I had to walk and pace. And then what fall yeah, asleep you'd for move, five to 10 minutes. It would move and it would tingle that. Dude, do you, you realize, I didn't know that either, but if you put, peel off a person's big toenails, the pain lasts. It's, it's, a, I think it's, it's connected to a nerve fiber bundle in the, in the, in the, in the heel. <laughs> in the heel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it so was, it was, I just vibrates. Like, I couldn't believe, yeah, I, I, yeah, I couldn't believe it. And the next, so I had to work 12 hours on this set the next day, do all this stuff. I got no sleep and my toe was absolutely 
killing me. And so what did I do? Fuck. I pulled out the, the, because I didn't sleep, I pulled out the, what's the, the sleep, uh, the, nar the narcoleptic, the, the cognition drug that everyone uses. I have a whole ton of them. My, um, uh, do you know what I'm talking about? The first Denoxia, smart drug. That Dihexa, Solank, there's so many fucking names. No, no, the pharmaceutical one, the, uh, Provisional or what? What's the? Oh, oh, oh modafinil, modafinil, modafinil. So I was like, okay, it's a modafinil day. And then I literally, from when I had my Achilles tendon surgery, like years ago, I had like a little bit of oxy, you know, oxycodone or whatever. Took this little sliver, and it's like I went to work, I was a hundred percent awake, and it had no pain. Those were dire emergency exactly. times. That's when you, I broke out the big guns, you know. But so you got to kind of go. You know, wh where am I in this? Do I still have the potential maybe to to do things naturally? I default to that first. And then if it doesn't work, then let's keep upping the, the stakes and get more and more to the bigger guns. Even with like testosterone, like, you know, like for me, uh, I use HCG and I use clomiphene and my balls work. They work well, but I, I just like to get a little bit stronger pulse going to them and at some point in time, I'll probably be on a pure exogenous testosterone. Right. But while I can get away with it, I'm doing right. it. However, when I tore my Achilles tendon back in 2017, working on a Nike commercial, I got home from surgery. I injected right above the Achilles tendon with BPC-157, TB-500, and I went to my doctor and I said, I need to be on growth hormone. I was running in five months. That's the fastest they'd ever seen at the training facility that I recovered at where Conor McGregor you know, recovers from. And so there's times when, you know, I think, you, you know, it, you got to throw them up, put them all on the table and you say, how do all these kind of work? What's available to me? And then you got to go, how do I stage this stuff? You know, and I, I'm sure with fat loss, you, you probably further down the rabbit hole than I am in that particular thing. But, you know, I, I typically, you know, with fat loss, there's so many ways you can go about it, you know, with regardless of peptides, but peptides can turn the lights on and immediately going, Oh, I got leverage on this. And now I want to work out. And now I want my six pack. And now I want, you know, so, um, anyways, that's, well, no, what, what, well, we can go a lot deeper on that. And, 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 and that's, a, and, that, and that's good. What you said, um, we, we could probably go a lot deeper on fat loss. We'll just briefly talk a little bit more about peptides. So I just answer, I, I, I mean, I mean uh, what we're talking about in, in naming some peptides and stuff like that. And then we can go deeper. I think, and you can comment on this. I think that most people are confused about drugs. You know, what's called drugs for life extension and performance enhancement. And that is, they say, like, I got this amazing, I should just read it to you and set you up. But like, I got this really good question today from a guy. So I'm on this new platform called five.me. And it's a really cool thing, which by the way, I'm going to definitely connect you with them because it'd be really good for your audience too. Uh, but basically it's like a cheap, low cost way for people to ask you questions and then you answer them. And then they put them in this like online cloud database and people can read them if they pay monthly to access the question. Oh, that's cool. So the good thing about, about it for people like me and you is that, dude, we don't have to keep asking the same fucking question over and over and over again. As you know, you get the same questions in your DMs or your PMs. True story to the podcast audience, because I had to say this the other day on a live I did on Instagram. By the way, I did my first three Instagram lives in my life this week. I had no idea I what I was one doing. Of them. I just yeah. live. I, I, I just went live and I was like, hey, yeah. this is my new membership platform, blah, blah, blah. But dude, a true story. Facebook is so demonic and so horrific that I literally went in somehow. You know how they lock you out? Because I have like an author page and then I have like a, a, a book page. Yeah. And then I have my Jay Campbell private, you know, personal Facebook like everybody has. And some, sometimes I get into the, on the app and it just like sucks me into a vortex of like, oh, fuck, I just got pulled into the wrong page. I got into my IM for the first time in like two years, bro, on my phone. I had 6,400 messages oh unanswered. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> 6,400. I'm like, what is this? I mean, the first thought was like, I got to get out. I got to exit. I got to exit. Yeah. I can't read anything in there. Because I mean, who knows? I mean, I can have fucking God himself messaging me in there, but I wouldn't know because I don't want to go into it. But the, but the truth is, you know, to, to, to wrap this is like, People send you messages in this platform and you can answer them and then you can collate it. 
And then ultimately why it's so awesome is that eventually you and I can be like, hey man, I answered that question on my membership platform for 10 bucks a month. You can go read the answer. Boom, right? So that's going to be awesome. Great. But here's the question. <clears throat> Jay, I love your work. I've read all your books. I follow you on your podcast. You know, it's always that. And then there, and then it's, uh, I, I, I follow you. I, you know, I, I watched the podcast that you did with Alexander the other day on fat loss peptides. And I ordered all these peptides for limitless. And I, I want to understand like, you know, how do I, how do I use this peptide to, to get cut? And then how do I use this peptide to build muscle? And so the funny part is, and you know, this, I mean, God better than me. I mean, in the life that you lived as long as you did, and the training and, and maintaining the weight and conditioning that you did, like people don't understand, bro, that building muscle or losing fat has nothing to do with the drugs. It has everything to do with your nutrition. And I think that people, and again, I'm going to let you answer this, but I, I see people that get so confused because they, they, they presume that like, you know, these three or four peptides are for fat loss. And then these are for muscle gain. And it's the same thing with anabolic steroids and performance enhancing agents and, you know, on and on it goes, but it's like, no, like you have to understand that like, if your goal is fat loss, then you don't give a shit about muscle gain because right now you're going to be eating at a caloric deficit, yeah. increasing movement patterning, hopefully taking drugs that increase resting energy expenditure, blah, 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 the things we've already been talking about. And then you go from there. You don't build muscle and lose fat at the same time, but bro, people they're so confused. And then you got the bros, you know, the fitness influencers on YouTube. I won't name names, but I could who lie to them and tell them that you can do these things. And so that's why people are so confused, but can you kind of just shed light on that? of like, what's really happening, you know, when you choose to either lose fat or gain muscle? Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I've always had a little bit of a different philosophy. I focus on process, the outcome. Right. Exactly. The outcome exactly. comes and, and granted, you are going to focus on, let's say you are doing a fat loss process, you know, or a, a muscle gaining process. Right. But, you know, the peptides and all this stuff are just trying to get your body to function like you did when you were younger, right? It's just that the, the pathways are all working pro right. appropriately. So as we age, proteins don't fold as well and things don't work as well. And, and your body's trying to say, Hey, I only have so many resources. Let me just keep my, myself alive and just do these critical things. I don't have time to build all this muscle and everything. And, you know, I don't yep. have the resources, but I think that, you know, first and foremost, it's always your diet and, and, and your training response. Right. Exactly. I mean, but, but really you could train exactly almost the same way for fat loss or muscle gain. It's just that you're not going to be able to push as hard if you're doing fat loss. If you're cutting, there's no way you're going to have the raw, the, 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 the energy output to actually yeah. start progressively loading at higher levels. Right. Exactly. But your, your food intake, I always just say, look, when you're, when you want to lose weight, lean on protein, cut out right. all the, cut out the garbage, just do it. It's so simple. And then what you do is get yourself a really nice essential amino complex because those are the ones your body can't make. You have to, so your body can make all the proteins except for the essentials. So they have to be yep. obtained from the diet. If you load your body with the essentials, that means whatever protein you eat afterwards, your body can use more of that protein because not all protein is is perfect and some of it gets converted into carbs, right? That's why you know, you've heard probably Dr. David Minkoff talk about this, right? A, a, a protein and a carb has the same amount of calories per gram. Yep. Yeah. Right. But it's only if a protein isn't used to build a structure. It's only if the protein gets converted into a carbohydrate because the liver rips off the nitrogen and turns it into a, a carbohydrate. Right. So I always just say lean on protein. If you just eat a eggs and and I'm talking still good, all pastured, organic, grass fed, wild caught. But if you just eat a meat and vegetables diet and you time your starch two hours before, during, or after, two hours before, during, or after training, because that's when you're, you're, you, you've upregulated your body's ability to bring in sugar, right? If you just exactly. keep your starch around that, eat your meat and, and proteins, and then if you get hungry, have some celery and, and, and carrots. Just, you cannot eat enough vegetables to get fat. It, it, there's just no way, right? So at the end of the day, you know, when you're, when you're trying to, to get lean, the first thing you do is you don't think, oh, like, let me jump to this peptide and still be eating Taco Bell and all this crap <laughs> that I'm eating, right? You go, but bro, I, so many people do think that, though. 
That's what's sad. Because they're entitled. They want exactly. the pill, the magic pill. The yes. Here, easy button. I look the easy button. Yeah, I look at health just like this. Starts with sleep, then diet, exercise, stress management, and that includes positive, good stress like hormesis, and yep. then managing your environmental toxic load, and then get the hell out of the sick care system. And then the tools you have at your disposal are peptides, supplements, medications. So, yep. so if you're over jumping straight to peptides and, and yes, you know, look, if you take a GLP one out, you're going to start losing weight. You will like some, you know, but if you jump ahead before you really take care of the basics, you're never going to be able to manage a single digit body fat 365 days out of the year. Exactly. Because you can't outrun that bad diet. There's no, no way you can do it. And it's not that hard. I always say 85% of the time eat whole foods. What does that mean? 85%? What does that mean? It means however many meals you eat in a day, that's how many cheat meals you get in a week. If you eat two meals a day, you get two cheat meals a week. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user? Maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Bro, you know who used to say, uh, I, I don't mean to cut you off because you're, I'm letting you go. You're, you're, you're creating magic. This is an amazing podcast. Uh, Charles Polquin, remember, he used to say, you get yep. your carbs when you deserve them. That's right. And that's exactly that's right. fucking right. Yeah. And everyone's addicted to sugar right now. It, like every single body. It will take you about a week to two weeks if you really commit to just end it in that that garbage right and what right. happens is is you start going hey i can now go hours and hours and hours and i don't need to put food in my face if you wake up in the morning and you are starving and you can't wait to eat you are not metabolically flexible and you're you're basically addicted to sugar you know it's in everything so just roll off go to your simple protein with every meal have vegetables healthy fats you know and um, basically time all your carbohydrates and still don't eat garbage ones, but time your starch around your training. You can't well, I, I love you, that. dude. Yeah, I love you. That's so good. I mean, you had, you added so many things that I wouldn't have said. This is an amazing podcast for all the listening audience. You guys are blessed to be able to listen to us go back and forth. Um, to what you're saying about the two hour window. I mean, look, you know, this goes back to the old school bodybuilding days of like, you know, make sure you get your post-workout nutrition, you know, drink your shake. I mean, it's all true. Your body is primed through, you know, I think it's called, what is it? Glycogen synthase, whatever the enzyme to, you know, upregulate or increase your body's absorption of glucose, which again is, you know, ultimately yeah, the like stored the form of glycogen. transmitters. Yes. So if, I mean, if you like, just move your body is bypassing insulin, right? So when you, exactly. But when you train with weights, right? Like you increase uh, you know, contractile tissue uh, movement and, and, and fiber innervation. And then, you know, again, let's say you train 45 minutes a day, three days a week, maybe four days a week. You know, old guys like me, I only train three days now, right? But I mean, I used to train four, sometimes five, but I do cardio on my off days from lifting. But on the lifting days, you know, again, post-workout, I usually go, me and Monica train together right now. She just had her you know, re, she just had her boobs redone. So she's, you know, out of the gym for the next month. She already started cardio 10 days later. We can talk about that. I got to let you know, dude, her, her, uh, her peptide healing stack is insane. I mean, Nick, oh, developed, I, I want to like, talk about peptide healing stacks for well, sure. Well, we'll, we'll talk about it, but like, so he developed a healing, uh, a, a serum and it's a very high dose of, uh, BPC, GHKCU, uh, G, uh, TB 500, um, colloidal silver and EGR. And it's unreal. I mean, like the, the, her surgeon, is like meeting because he's coming down here to Mexico tomorrow. We're meeting on Saturday because he wants to understand like how he can get it and start using it with his patients. And again, this is stuff that's not in the marketplace. I've already told people that eventually we're going to sell it from Limitless. So you'll be able to sell it. You'll be able to buy it, use it, sell it to your clients. But uh, the other product that we can talk about is the hair product, which he's also bringing here tomorrow that I'm going to use. And I'm going to radically regrow my hair. We'll, we'll get to that. But um, awesome. it, dude, the, the, the truth is, is that these things, again, peptides, they, there's so much that they can do. And, you know, getting back to that post-workout nutrition window, like 
there is a time and a place, regardless of your genetics. I don't give a fuck if you're, you know, an endomorph, mesomorph, ectomorph, or a combination of all three. It's exactly what you said. There's time windows, specificity, where every human, based on their training and their movement patterning and how hard they lift and the intensity and all that stuff, can absorb sugar. So in a long-winded type of way, I love, you know, you're going to laugh at this, but I love to eat simple sugars immediately post-training. Yeah. Dude, I take, I should go in and get them right now because you get them in Mexico. They're called gummitas. And they're literally a, a little miniature bag of gummy bears. And I pound usually two of those bags. It's probably like 40 grams of simple sugar as soon as I get done working out, right? Now, I mean, yeah. I don't eat sugar Anytime else, for the most part, I'm pretty clean, especially now because I'm attempting to be ripped, not attempting to be. I am ripped right now, right? <laughs> but like, but the truth, but the truth is, the truth is, is like, people don't get this. What we're talking about is beyond what most people discuss, and it's like, it goes back to again what you already said and what Polokun said. You get your carbs when you deserve them, which means when you deserve your carbs is again post workout that two hour window that you talked about when you're training at an intensity necessary to refuel or refill it's the same thing your body's muscle glycogen stores which have been depleted now if we extrapolate this and go further and we should because we're geeking out right now like people who fast 18 to 20 to 22 whatever hours you know a couple days a week like i'm doing your body is also primed to refill but here's where people fuck up steven and then you can take the floor they, they go 20 hours, 22 hours without eating, and they're like, oh, I'm going to eat anything because I can't. No. If you eat the right foods, and I'll just define right foods as like, you know, sweet potatoes, which is, as you know, the perfect form of carbohydrate. And I know not everybody can eat sweet potatoes, whatever. But sweet potatoes, you know, a clean white rice, like a jasmine rice or something like that. And then a clean wild caught fish. I love sea bass. I love the wild caught yeah, fish yeah, that you can get from from uh, Costco and the, you know, the prepackaged ones. And I put those in the air fryer. I mean, it's like, it, it's like butter. It melts in your mouth. But if, if you just ate that and you didn't eat pretzels or whatever other shit that, you know, you end up eating because you're like, in your mind, I just fasted 22 hours. I can eat whatever the fuck I want. It's like, you know, it's the guys that are like the, the OMAD dudes. Oh, I can eat whatever I want because I didn't eat all day, you know? And no, yeah. it's not true. But if you just eat, again, clean burning sources of carbohydrates and proteins and hopefully good essential fatty acids from whatever wildcat fish or grass-fed beef that you eat, mm -hmm. Bro, you will never have dietary issues. You will not be fat. Never. You will not have yeah. autoimmune disorders. You know, again, people create these realities from not treating their body with respect. And again, I know we all junk. We all eat junk. I mean, we're living on earth, in the earth and there's really good shitty food to eat. It tastes great, but it's like you got to <laughs> regulate it. I mean, that was one of the yeah. things I came up with in this 30 days to program. It's like, if you're going to do this program, and again, it's a 30 day program. It's for, it's for advanced dieters. It's for people like me and you, but you can't cheat. Like if you want to maximize yeah. everything that you get in that limited 30 day window to get the absolute most body fat loss without, with, you know, maximum muscle preservation, you can't cheat even one hour or one day in the 30 days. Yeah. But that's where people get lost. And again, I'm not saying that you don't live your life and you don't eat a Snickers or a fucking, you know, a tub of Ben and Jerry's or whatever. But I'm just saying in the times that you're focused on achieving a specific goal, that's when you don't cheat. It's the same that's thing, right. with, you know, in a long winded way, what you just said of like, get that two hour window. But see, yeah. most people, Stephen, can't adhere to the information or to the instruction. And they, and they make up excuses in their head because again, they didn't eat for 22 hours or they train so hard that yeah. they can eat those four Big Macs and two large fries at McDonald's. Yeah. And you have a lot of influencers that are like on my program, you can eat whatever you want. And then all they do is they have them fast for so long that they're going to probably, you know, lose weight. It's and, terrible and though. It's right. terrible. Look, if you study what trans fats do to you and look, there are oh, a, even if it says unreal, something is dude. not, no, it says no trans fat. There is an allowable amount in there that they don't have to quantify all those snack foods, all that stuff. Like you're getting 
trans fats. And if you look at what these do, they constipate the cells. They yeah. harden the membrane and, it, and you can't get anything in, out of the cell. They're very, very damaging and they last for a long time. And so look, I always say this, here, here's the reality of pushing. Most likely you're gonna be able to withstand 30, 90 days of full out all intensity. I'm changing my life. I'm getting my physique. I'm going for it, right? And then the rest of the year, you know, or for another six months, you're just trying to hang on to what you got, right? You're in, you're, you're still there. You're doing this stuff, but you're not, you're not breaking PRs. You're not a hundred percent not snacking, right? So when you do commit to like, let's say a program you're doing for 30 days, don't be a child. Like you're not, you have the ability, just stick with it. After two weeks, the, the cravings will go away. You have to right. know that these, these engineers are creating chemicals that excite your taste buds, and, uh, taste buds and they've made normal food taste unpalatable. And it's, you, you gotta break that cycle. And the best example, I always see this and I pay attention. As soon as those people come on an airplane down the aisle and they start handing out those cookies and pretzels, I love watching people because they're like, uh, uh, like they haven't eaten in a, a year, you know, oh, thank you, you know, and, and it, to me, so true. you know, and you're like, are we really that like weak that we can't, you know, go a flight without eating, you know, or like just have a water or a cup of coffee or something like, and I, I just think that, you know, once you get on a roll with it, the results are so easy. And then you add in the peptides and the other things. You optimize your hormones. And all of a sudden, you're like, you know what? My body's responding like it did when I was in my 20s. Like, right. it just, boom, you know? But you've got to master your, I mean, just if you have that garbage stuff in your house, just get rid of it. Just, just, that's just the best toss way to do it, it away. That's, that, you know? that's the best way to do it, bro. That's the best way to do it. I mean, and, and look, you know, you and I are not Spartan, you know, we, we enjoy our life. You know, we're not going to sit, sit here and tell people that we don't actually eat whatever the fuck we eat when we want to eat sometimes because we do. And again, we, we deserve to, we built our bodies. We have a lot of muscle. We have very low body fat. Our bodies metabolically can handle eating shittier than the average person who is a, a, a puff ball of mush. Right. So it's like, and again, I'm not saying that it's, 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 uh, it's something that, that, that we, you know, uh, focus on, but that's a great, that's, that, I've always said the same thing that you just said, get the shit out of your house, throw it fucking yeah. away. Yeah. Don't have any garbage, you know, foodstuffs where you can just walk into your pantry and open up and eat shit right now. Again, for me right now, I'm on my 30 day program. 30 days is Saturday. Tomorrow is my birthday. It's day 29. I told everybody that follows me in my groups and in my inner circle that I'm going to be revealing. Hopefully again, you know, anything can happen, Steven. I can walk out of my house and get hit by a fucking car. But like, I, I hope to reveal pictures tomorrow of my best condition that I've ever looked in my life. Now, oh, I, awesome. I've also said, Hey, look, I've also said that again, this is a no holds barred. I'm using everything and anything. And I will definitely be using a, I get it over the counter in Mexico, my bro. I'm going to be using like 15 milligrams of diazide, which I'm probably going to take at four o'clock today. And then probably when I wake up tomorrow morning, I will definitely use uh, a same, maybe less, maybe 10, 10 to 15 milligrams of diazide. And I know you know this, I don't have to say this to you, but uh, to you people out there, it is a potassium sparing diuretic. It's what they give people who have kidney disease and are fat flaming dumpster fire type two diabetics to get rid of their renal hypertension. But for guys like Steven and I, who, you know, have competed or, you know, uh, want to look like we're peeled and we have no water in our skin, you can actually take that and it literally will dissipate the water in your skin. And it's a safe diuretic if there's a such thing, because it does spare potassium. As you know, a lot of guys in the bodybuilding bro world use potassium, I mean, use diuretics and kill themselves, literally fucking die. Because yeah, you can yeah. literally stop your heart, right? So it's yeah. like if you're going to use a super low dose of a diuretic, that's the one to use. I have not used a diuretic, an actual real diuretic since I competed, bro, which was when I uh, – the last time I used one, which was actually um, so funny. It's probably a couple of years before I met you through Natalie uh, when I was 43. So it's nine years ago. 
Now it's funny that I actually just told everybody on this podcast and just mentioned that to you because bro, I'm not kidding you a week ago, not even a week. It was on Friday or Saturday. Um, walking through fifth Avenue, you know, I was in a pharmacy and I saw diazide and I'm like, wait a minute, what is diazide? It triggered, it triggered a memory. I was like, Oh, that's the potassium sparing diuretic. How much is that? You know, they got a little box. It's like, you know, it's pharma that they give the diabetics. And so she's like, Oh, senor, it's a 75 pesos, right? It's like six bucks. I'm like, oh, I'll take one. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm use it yeah. tonight. Time like, to get that already, shrink I'm, wrap. You know, I've already mapped it out. I've already mapped it's it out. Awesome. I know exactly what I'm going to do. So again, yeah. assuming I don't get hit by a car, my dog drags me into a fight and I get mauled. Uh, I will literally tomorrow. Uh, so I'm fasting today for sure. Uh, probably fast into tomorrow morning, probably skip my oatmeal, probably get be at the gym by like 11 o'clock, uh, hit the weights, you know, and then get a, you know, nice little pump, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll be drinking something probably, uh, probably I'll probably eat a couple of sweet potatoes before I go to yeah, the gym. Yeah. Like that carbs then, will make you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, and then yeah. just take some picks and then that's what I'm going to use for my 30 days of shreds. Now I will tell you this, you know, go deeper on the fat loss stuff and we can go as granular as you want. What are we, what are we at right now? We got a good 20 minutes left. Um, okay. I got nine guys doing this. Now they're all between 36 and 67, six, 60, almost 67. Bro, the fat loss that every single one of these guys has is the most insane shit that you can. I mean, I have guys like they can't even believe what they look like. I'm not going to break what I'm doing. I can, we can talk basics or whatever, but you know, I mean, like I said, everything and anything, the kitchen sink is involved in this fat loss program. Because again, you have 30 days to lose as much physical body fat as you can while preserving muscle, right? So everything and anything, there's nothing that we're doing. that's unhealthy. There's nothing that's producing side effects. Um, you know, for sure, if you're one of those people that's like, uh, you know, Dr. J talks about like, if you're really uh, sensitive to stims, um, you know, hi you're a hyper excreter of those things like caffeine, you know, that caffeine sensitivity oh, yeah. gene or whatever. Some of these things you probably can't take like tesofensine, uh, yeah. fentermine, yeah. Um, you know, again, fentermine. Fentermine, by the way, is an amazing drug and it's over the counter in Mexico, bro. What, what is you fentermine? Can... What is that one? So, so fentermine was a drug that was, if you remember the fen fen diet where all those people died. So yeah. fentermine is the agonist. Uh, it's a stimulant agonist. So it's like, I'll, I'll call it this. It's not an amphetamine salt like Adderall, but it's like a derivative of Adderall. So when you take it, you have massive appetite suppression and energetic stimulation. So it's definitely increasing resting energy expenditure. So bro, like no lie, yeah, like if you're using tesofensine, now I'm kind of giving some stuff away here, but if you're using teso, and nobody, by the way, this is brand new shit. If you're using tesofensine at a low dose and you take uh, a fourth to a third, depending on your sensitivities, of fentermine in the afternoon, dude, there's no desire to eat. You feel absolutely amazing uh, because you already know the teso is blowing up your BDNF. The fentermine also heightens, I won't call it BDNF, it just heightens cognition. It's very mild. It's just very well studied. You can read about this. There's no side effects from fentermine. They, when they killed the fentermine drug or the fen fen drug, it was the other drug, which was a mal inhibitor that was causing people to have heart stoppages. And again, remember the people that were on fen fen were morbidly obese, right? So you give those people anything and they're going to fucking die. They have heart reactions. They, you know, heart yeah. speeds up. They're poorly conditioned. They fall over and have a heart attack or stroke out or an embolism or whatever, but they got rid of the fen fen drugs or the, the whole program was eliminated. There was all sorts of lawsuits. But fentermine was not any part of causing the issues. So if you just use pure fentermine, and again, not the dosage, because I think the dosage for fat people is 30 milligrams. Bro, we're using like 10 milligrams. We're literally using a tablet splitter and splitting it into thirds. And you're taking that in the afternoon, right? So your test cell, you wake up 536, you take your test of fentamine. Uh, And by the way, Limitless, I think you know this now, Limitless half the dose. So all the scientific studies in tesofensine is at 0 0.50. He, he's offering 0 0.25. So a lot of people. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. So a lot of people that complain that they can't handle teso. By the way, I don't know a single person on the planet who has not said to me that this is the most amazing drug I've ever taken in my life. But I can't sleep at night. So yeah. by the people, by him halving the dosage, now all of those people are like, thank you.
That's awesome. I got yeah. every, I get all the benefits now and I can sleep. For me, dude, at 0.5 or 0.25, I don't feel any difference. I mean, I still get the massive BDNF spike, but I could sleep on five and I could obviously I can sleep on less of a dosage too. But that and 10 milligrams to 12 milligrams to 15 milligrams, because again, it's 30 milligram tab. So it depends on how good your tablet splitter is. Bro, that's a game changer. On your fasting days, if you take those two combined with terzapatide, which again is a weekly shot, there's no eating. I mean, there isn't even the thought process of eating. I'm serious. I'm not kidding you. You don't even get hungry. Guys like me and you do ravenous appetites, really hyper muscular people. You don't even think about eating. It's unreal. So interesting. Yeah. I well, mean, so I, it's like, look, I, I told the guys in my group, bro, that five or six years ago, without all these, you know, magical golden age fat loss peptides, we couldn't do this. Like when I wrote my book, Guaranteed Shredded in 2018, and I published it in early February of 2019, I couldn't have. I'm sorry. I, I, I wrote it in 2017 and published it in early uh, February of 2018. No, no, I'm, I'm wrong. I'm getting it. It's, it's two, it was 2019 <laughs> February, bro. I couldn't do this. Th- th- I mean, I didn't, I didn't have the access to these tools. Yeah. There wasn't yeah. this kind of technology for fat loss. I mean, terzapatide, tensofessine, um, you know, semaglutide. I mean, th- that didn't exist. So you, no. you, you could not get the same results being a smart guy or doctor or bro uh, with fat loss that you can get now that you could get five years ago, four years ago, you, it's not possible. There's just no way yeah. you could not fast at this level, you know, again, without the threat of hunger pangs. Yeah. Uh, I mean, willpower, yeah. as you know, it's the ultimate determinant, but now we don't even need willpower. You need yeah, smart a lot of people- and organization, but you don't even need willpower because I'm telling you the terse appetite kills your appetite, bro. I mean, it doesn't kill it where you're, you know, you don't eat, but if you just need to fast like 18, 20, 22, 24 hours, let's just say one day, there's no problem. And, and by the way, this works for everyone, fat awesome. people, people like me and you, I mean, dude, you see, you'll see when you see pictures of me, dude, you're going to be like, fuck bro. I mean, yeah, I, you, I'm you know what I look like. I mean, one guy with a six pack is one guy with a six pack, but like this is a different level of fat loss because I have been fasting literally four days a week for a month. Oh, that's great. It's insane. And, and eating look, a lot of food on my food days, right? So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I fucking pig out. You know, I'm yeah. probably eating 3,500 to 4,000 calories a day and I'm probably like 204, 205. I don't know. I haven't been on a scale. I'll weigh myself tomorrow. But I mean, I am definitely the leanest, most muscular I've ever been. I don't think I've lost a single ounce of muscle, maybe a couple, but it's crazy. It's fantastic. I, 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 it's, you've got me drugs, sold. Dude. I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna, no, I'm I'm to try the drugs. Oh, you have an amazing physique already, but it really is the drugs. It's the drugs. I, I mean, I really wish I could say, oh, I'm so smart. <laughs> but it really is the drugs. The drugs make it conducive to doing this. Now, obviously I do have a really awesome understanding of pharmacokinetic pharmodynamics and kinetics, but it's still the drugs. I, I could not look like this yeah. doing what I did in 2019 because you didn't have access to this. Well, look, you're also somebody who is a busy person who has to use his brain yeah. constantly. So a lot of the people, like I'm sure you're honest, these, these are people that go to work, they have jobs that they're doing stuff. So to be able to fast and have an agent that helps you, you know, be able to get through that without being like, Oh, I'm dying at my desk and my job is suffering. My performance is suffering. You know, that's the beauty of these things is that, you know, you now have the ability to maintain your performance. You know, it's not like you got to be emaciatedly like dying, you know? Totally bro. Literally. Anyways, totally. Yeah. But I, you've gotten me, you know, I mean, I'm, I feel pretty damn like for me right now, I'm, I'm more in like a muscle building phase. Um, cause I kind of, I leaned out a little bit already and, and I'm, but I don't know, like I, you've, you've definitely got me thinking about, I mean, have you ever, you know, this other, what was the one you said? Fin, fin fam that the, what was that called again? Uh, Fentermine, Fentermine. Have you ever tried phenylparacetam? I've used, I don't think so. I, I've used most of the race of Tams um, and I don't really this feel one, good on them. Like, I, you know, I, I know you know this cause we've talked about this. Like the only nootropic peptide that I use, that's not a peptide is modafinil. And I haven't used modafinil 
Um, well, you know, I shouldn't say that because to me, tesofensine is a, is a nootropic realistically yeah. because it does so much for BDNF and I've been using that for a year now. Um, I haven't even used modafinil since I wrote, uh, since I wrote uh, fully optimized life, which was in August of 2019. I mean, it was, you know, June, July and August. It was published in August. I haven't used any modafinil. I haven't even taken like a sliver of modafinil and that was my favorite nootropic drug by far. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, um, but like the I don't know. It's it's interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's like I, yeah, a, I'm not a it's like stem a, guy, so I don't really have a lot of comments. I've used them. I don't get a really good effect. Like when I would use the any of the racetams, bro, I normally would only get a headache at some point. So I just yeah. stopped using them. Yeah, it's the only one that I like. It's kind of like a Adderall, but it uh, like it or like it's like an amphetamine, but it works not on the dopamine system. It works on the choline pathway, so it's non addictive, whatever. But that has performance enhancing, like you know, I think it's banned from WADA, and you saw it, but you know, it kind of reminded me of what you're saying about that. You just have a ton of energy all day long. And, and that one, I was able, I'm able to go to sleep and I always forget about that one, but that one is a really nice sort of physical. It's not so much of a heady, like my brain, because this thing's giving me anxiety sometimes when I do to, you know, the nootropics, I, I just, I'd rather have some resolve and calmness in my day, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, so, well, I mean, yeah, no, I totally understand. I mean, see, that's what, that's the thing is like tesofensine doesn't amp you. It just makes you yeah. have high levels of BDNF, which, as you know, is flow state. I mean, it's just like, yeah. you know, this is me right now, right? Like, now I injected my terzapatide today because I forgot to take it on Tuesday. So I, we could talk off air. I don't want to like, you know, yeah, yeah. bore people, but, you know, you take terzapatide one shot a week. And I only, I only take 0.25. It's the same. I've never gone up. I started using it in October. Uh, I used it for about six weeks. Um, it helped me when I was in Peru to not destroy myself because I had no access to a gym and we were there for two weeks. Um, but then I stopped yeah. for like a month. You, that's another thing with all of these new peptides, bro. You can cold turkey every one of these drugs and it does nothing. There's no receptor yeah. attenuation. It's on, it's on real stuff. You know, because yeah. you and I back in the day when we were using shit like Rip Fuel and all those things, if you would use them for a couple of months, <laughs> Ripped Fuel. Like, well, I, I remember Ripped Fuel. My God, I, I've never heard that to be... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you remember now, right? I remember it. Yeah, that stuff got your heart racing. Ripped fuel. That's uh, literally we, hilarious, dude. Tell me about this healing stack that you guys are playing around with. I mean, it's basically uh, TB500. Okay, so, yeah, BPC so let me take it. Uh, let me just see. Hold on. I'm just deleting something real quick here. Uh, all right, deleted it. Hold on. Let me just. Chris is freaking out because like, I just overwhelmed their staff. Hold on. Um, so, so basically it's, uh, I mean, I, well, then, uh, you know, I, I sent the article, so we wrote an article out, not past Thursday, but, uh, two weeks ago. So a week ago from this past Thursday or from today. No, I guess it was actually a week. No, is that right? Yeah. It published last Thursday. So if you go on the website right now, it's a top article. I think besides the podcast that came out on Monday, um, and it details Monica stack, you know, she basically had caps capsular contractions from having breast augmentation in 2008. Um, which she's wanted to get fixed. As you know, she's very lean, muscular chick. So she's like, you know, I want to get my boobs either fixed or replaced or whatever. So we replaced them. We have an amazing surgeon down here. And uh, we detailed the whole thing in the stack. So, I mean, it, you know, it's just basically what you already know. It's GHKCU. Uh, it's TB500. It's BPC157. And then Nick made a solution, a balm, a roll-on. So it's essentially a serum, but it's like in a roll-on applicator. Oh, um, cool. So she could, you know, apply it right underneath where the surgical incisions are, right below the breast tissue. And dude, this, the healing is the most profound thing you've ever seen. I mean, when she took off the stitches, not the stitches, but uh, so her surgery was last Monday, not this Monday, but last Monday. When she went in to see the guy on Tuesday, he was like, he was looking at me, looking at her, looking at me, looking at her like, gee, his name is Dr. Luigi Palermo, amazing guy, Italian guy. He's like, what is going on? I said, doc, I told you we were going to use peptides. Yeah. He's like, yes, but this is not, I, I did not understand what, what is going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get, I mean, it's, bro. But see, that's the thing. It's like most of these allopathic docs, they don't get it. Yeah. You I know mean, what I'm saying? I'll like they literally great, don't get it. Yeah. I'll give you an amazing story of healing peptides. Cause most of the time you think of healing peptides, you think of, oh, I've got this tear or I've got, you know, you know, cause we're all, we work out and stuff. But uh, Andrea, you know, my fiance, she uh, started having rapid heart rate and her aura ring was saying that something, you know, something was going on. 
And she kept telling me about it. And all of a sudden it got really bad. So she was like hyperthyroid and to the degree that it was like, she couldn't even sleep. Like she would be like, uh, and have rapid breathing. So we got a blood test and they basically were telling her that she probably had Graves disease. And which the, what they do to cure that is they ablate part of your thyroid. They basically just get rid of it. And so then you end up yeah, with I thyroid. I, I understand the, the, the thyroid ablation. I've, I, I understand that. Yeah. And so I, we found a really good endocrinologist in Beverly Hills, whatever. And I did a teleconference with him and I said, explain to me what's happening here. And he was basically talking about how the immune systems, you know, like your innate versus your adaptive have gotten out of whack and all that stuff. And so I basically said, look, we're going to try something with peptides. Are you cool with doing all the, the testing and everything we do, but let me, let's do this. And because I'm going to work with someone who can, and he's like, sure. And I got her, we basically did thymosin alpha one, TB 500 and BPC 157. And within two months it, it fixed it. And wow. when we got back yeah. on the call, the guy was like, he was just like this. I you know. Yeah. I they mean, don't understand, bro. Uh, they don't understand. You know? I mean, you literally have to make small talk with them when you start telling them about peptides. They literally look at you like you're a fucking alien. I mean, bro, it's the truth. I mean, the book is, you know, you read the book. You left me an awesome review, which by the way, I appreciate. Uh, the book is 50 years ahead of allopathic medicine. Yeah. It really is. They're, they're not trained in this stuff. If they were trained in this stuff, the pharmaceutical industry would shut down it overnight, as you know, because there's no money. Yeah. The peptides don't, they, they, as you, you just said it, they fundamentally address and oftentimes, and I don't want to make claims, correct the root cause. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and the thing is, is what, when you'll, you'll be like, I'm very comfortable with BPC, the Swiss army knife that it is and, and TB 500 and thymus and alpha one. Like I always have those on hand, you know, but it's, what's amazing is, is as you go, spend time with these things over years and you keep researching them and you keep applying them to certain things, you, you start realizing that, wow, there's, there's all these other things that this does, you know, like, you know, because most of the time you think of a lot of people use TB 500 and they have some sort of, like I said, like a tear or some sort of soft tissue, something, you know, because it has angiogenesis, it will like kind of create pathways in there and it will heal the, the fiber, you know, the, you know, the, the actin, but it's a, it's a, it's an immune system peptide as well. So it has this ability to balance the immune systems like your innate that you're born with and your adaptive and a lot of people's adaptive immune system has just spiraled out of control because they're you know they have it's why we have so much autoimmunity so yeah. for these things to like bpc 157 to kind of patch up leaky gut and for the you know tb 500 and thymus alpha one to kind of you know um, balance the immune system and to help your body understand what is an invader versus what is itself you know yeah. this is this is far beyond just like, oh, I've got this muscle thing and let me just cram some, you know, healing peptides in there. They really have all these, these benefits that are like, just continue to amaze me, you know? Yep. Bro, this has been so unreal, but the human, the human mind shuts down. I mean, this has been the longest podcast I've done with anyone in a long time. And it's well-deserved. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually post your, your website, but uh, real quick, let me just share this. The sharing here sucks, but I have you right here. Um, so if somebody, uh, I'll scroll down so people can see what you look like. Not bad for a 50 year old, bro. Not yeah, bad. Go, if you go to, uh, go to the scroll down uh, there on the, if you actually look at my physique on the well, that was when I was Vanity Fair magazine. But if you did click on this blue, the thorn one, you'll see a picture of me that is like really, I've scrolled down. Bro, uh, you're telling me it's better than that? Come on. Yes, yes. <laughs> check it out. It's, it's, it's right there. Click the blue link. Watch. The top of that is. Didn't work, man. It says create oh, your you're account. you're shitting me. <laughs> oh, what is going on? Bro, my on guy already my said, son. hey, man, does he need a new website guy? I'm like, he might. Dude, you're good. Yeah, Trust I mean, me. I good. built this damn. But, um, <laughs> um, but that, right, well, oh, people, cause that, no, that's the wrong. To, well, if you want people yeah. to message you, if you want people to connect with you or, you know, do a podcast with you or whatever, is this where you want them to go? Or do you have another place to get out? Um, no, they can just go to stephenmccain.com. You know, I would send me in the, um, 
uh, the contact, I would just use the email address. They can email me at support at Stephen at, you know, Stephen at Stephen McCain.com, or they can use my email, Stephen at Stephen McCain.com. Um, like, I love all this stuff we talked about. I love, you know, I'm like, you know, I've been doing this a long time and, and, yep. you know, I love to anybody that needs, you know, just say, Hey, you know, I saw what you said about this and, you know, I'm, I'm happy to help. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, we're all in this together and, you know, we're, let's save the world one, one person at a time. And that's what it takes. <laughs> I, have, I have a ton of people in Vegas, so I'm sure you're going to get hooked, hit up by people. They're going to be like, Hey man, listen to you on Jake Campbell's podcast. Let's get together, bro. I love to talk. <laughs> Dude, amazing, yeah. man. I really appreciate you coming on, bro. Seriously. It was amazing. So you guys and gals remember support the amazing people that come on the Jake Campbell podcast, support Steven, go to his website, Steven McCain, M C C A I N.com. And remember, Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.